The Baron Swamp. Like on purpose? Beware the rocks when entering the ravine. Eh. You can't climb in this game. What are you doing? All right. Hi. Made you look. Gun. Where'd you even come from? Were you just standing in the corner right there? That was so startling. Pop, 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 pop. Oops, someone died somewhere. Someone gonna drop on me? This place is this ramshackle, but it still has these doors and they still work. This looks so much like it was gonna like accordion upward as a lift or be a platformer. I don't know. I hear someone. I do think someone managed to walk off a cliff and die or something. Oh boy, this is one of those levels where gravity is your enemy. Do not trust. Oh, that's what it is. The, the stack of plates is what marks the top and bottom of ladders. And so those are just there for that ladder later. All preemptive and shit. You wouldn't be a trap, would you? That would be very rude. Ooh. Ooh, there's an item there. This level has dangerous drops. All over the place. Actually, I don't think I have to jump. I think I just need to walk. Or roll. Eh. Eh. I'm here now. There. Didn't even lose any places. Oh, look at this person thinking they're going to be a trap. <laughs> oh. K.O. Okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. I'm good at video games. I look like I'm bad at reacting to things it's because I definitely I, I can't help it I'm always in gameplay modes so like I the, unless there's a really heavy amount of I look close to the left ledge there unless the game really hypes up a particular item like oh my god I really had to work to get this one or it's such an important location or it's in a chest I do really just passively pick things up and then mash through the the, the screen that says what it even was so I'm just like, I don't know, it's like some pine resin or whatever, just fuck it. <laughs> I got some bullets. <laughs> I almost never think about individual drops in games. Eh. Ba -do -ba -do. Love that ledge. I don't especially expect there to be anything under it, but I also don't especially want to check. I think this might be trapped. No! That was supposed to kill. Ah! How do you even do that? <laughs> oh, fuck the other one. Extremely rude. Terrible, terrible hosts, frankly. Are you gonna explode? Uh oh. Uh uh. <laughs> Bye bye. 
Shave and a haircut. <laughs> No, 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 whoa, why is the way, whoa. Accidentally queued a weird uh, bonus roll. Wow, we're only five minutes in the episode. I feel like I've aged three years. Dude, this many cliffs around just, it does something to someone. I just feel like I've been through a lot right now and I could just use a break. Oh, even bumping into them doesn't make them start detonating. I think I'm thinking of something from the first level that was more volatile. Hi, friend. No. 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 Good. I think I have to drop down and grab this, then go back around. No, nope, it'll let me do this. Then over here, I have to drop down. Uh, 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 no! What? That's not nice. Damn it! This is why I don't trust the platforms. What the fuck? That was mean. Where the fuck even am I now? This is a different day, so I wasn't. This isn't the same day I played this part. Dude. That was rude as shit. Good. Is that puppet of the future dying to poison? Oh, my, maybe I got hit by the shot. I think the thing shot it. Hup! Almost walked into that trap. Am I back? I'm back, okay. Maybe I could and should fight the dudes? God, trying to run through this level sounds like a mistake. back. At least I can get my stuff back before I have to risk the jump again. No, they put my stuff on the... Is that my stuff? No, that's my stuff. Different blue thing. I am endlessly impressed by how close it can feel like you are to your enemy and then you still miss. I'm like, what? Dude, that was so rude. Still wasn't entirely sure how to get down from there either. I think it said Ghani's protection. I once again just kind of <laughs> didn't entirely absorb it because I'm so focused on the stress of the of the gameplay. Yeah, I was not I, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> Back to my doom. Oh thank god. We have a new one of these. They didn't go with having a shortcut back to the other stargazer, but I feel like they kind of wrote themselves into a corner. That's not really what that phrase means. I, but I think they cornered themselves a little bit with how they placed that last stargazer. As far as being able to get around goes. They kind of have to put one in the, in the new zone. It is very much like the last zone had stargazer. But even that one, you just looped around a factory, then got back to it, and then left, and then got to the new stargazer where I just was. And then you go down the hallway and here's a new stargazer. They, uh, they just... These outdoor environments that have the more blobby shaped zones, it's hard to have it wrap back around to previous locations like that. That's, I call it blobby. When you're kind of just in a series of like craters and trenches, because the, the earth around you is supposed to be the shape of the level. Or the equivalent of like the Bloodborne Forest. Like I see stuff like that as being just blobby levels. Because if you drew, if you look at the a picture of it, it would just be a big blobs with the occasional bridge or hole or something, as opposed to like the intricate, uh, tight, and dense and layered and multi-floored uh, environments you would get in like a uh, interior location. Is the difference? 
the sh it's the, in short, it's the difference between like the Bloodborne Forest and Upper Undead Burg, for example. At the house of Vanini, even priceless things have a price. Every item is a treasure of distinguished quality and superior provenance. Cool, 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 cool. Give me a quartz. Master Vanini's collection box. You are indeed full of surprises, sir. Patrons of prestige can always count on seeing a bit more than the average customer. I am talking about you, sir. Shall we pay a visit to the House of Vanini's private reserve? A dim ergo chunk. At the House of Vanini. Quartz, 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 quartz. No, new rings. Advance plus four. Increases damage inflicted on carcasses. Increases max amount of HP, stamina, and legion. What? An amulet can be equipped on a puppet. But a girl from the Monad family felt the puppet's pain and it made her sad. She made a special amulet to keep her dying, help her dying puppet recover. It's not expensive, I'll just grab it. Only 1700. And it doesn't weigh that much, as far as I can tell. So that should be kind of cool. It sounds like the equivalent of the ring you get from Lautrec, where it makes all your, your meters bigger, except this one doesn't say that it explodes when you take it off. Uh, but that could be cool. It depends on how much it increases your HP and stamina as it fights for the other spaces, but at least it doesn't weigh that much, so if I do unlock another amulet slot, I could just put it on, potentially. Advance plus four. What else was even added? Advance crank. Balance, advanced technique, motivity. That's just what they always are. Balance, motivity, technique, yeah. You didn't even give me quartz. That's like the whole point. I don't think he's ever sold me a quartz, but that's just one of the most exciting things that can happen from you getting uh, increased storage thing is that you actually get a new thing instead of no new thing. Legion arm modification part. What Legion arm do I even have equipped? I'm so sorry, everybody. It's just... It's hard to figure out how to even work this in sometimes. This is the exploding... This is my exploding lightning thing. I don't know if it's smartest to just use it as a single attack or a charge attack. This kind of a universal struggle. Like I, I can definitely see why people, how people would fall into the play style of really getting into the side stuff. But for me, it really is just like for a uh, for a souls like I need a a light attack, a heavy attack, a dodge, a block, and maybe a parry if I'm feeling spicy. Uh, everything else is harder to get me to use. In a way, this game is accomplished for getting me to even use my Y combo, which admittedly is so effective and just a thing that is given to me periodically that like why wouldn't i i guess like it gives me it seems to even give me a decent amount of like hyper armor where i can tank some hits without getting interrupted sometimes and actually like launch them out so that's cool uh and i'll sometimes use the special grinders the same way that i'll sometimes use uh the weapon augments in dark souls like pine resin but, and like, that's that feels like an upgrade, because in this game, that stuff, they made the pine resin type items a single use Estus flask style item, so they recharge, which means now it's a thing that I use per fight, potentially. And it's about thinking about when I want to use it in the fight instead of if I want to use it in the fight. Because in Dark Souls, it's an expensive or rare item. It's ne almost never a thing you just have access to continually. It's like in, in all the From Software games, that kind of weapon augment is a thing that, because it's a, a limited use item that you have to stock up on, you'd be tempted not to ever use it, because what if I need it later? Or like, you, you're, or you'll be using it up, or... And, the, and even the struggle there is like, if, if a boss is easier, you don't want to use it because you should save it for a harder boss. But on a harder boss, every attempt is so difficult that you don't actually believe in your ability to successfully get the boss down this attempt necessarily, because you might be here all day. So you're afraid that if you start using your resources to fight the boss, that you'll if it doesn't immediately lead to you winning, 
then you quickly will start running out of all of your resources, and now you don't have those. So not so not only do they not help you kill a boss, but they're all gone now, and you have to either farm or grind to get more, or you have to now get used to fighting a boss that's even harder because the resource you were using to try to make it easier is gone. And so I've got an iffy feeling about that whole dynamic, about th those things, like... This is, like, one of my approaches that, like... I... As far as exploration goes, I think the heart piece style approach of having multiple different things that upgrade your flask and so on, like in Dark Souls 2, in the Zelda sort of ways, uh, is a super cool solution for exploration and progression. And I think the Estus Flask's introduction in Dark Souls 1 is the best change it makes to Dark Souls. Like, I think that the Estus Flask in Dark Souls 1 is a better change from Demon Souls than the level design that everyone's making of such always makes such a big deal about. One, because Demon Souls already did a pretty good job, honestly. And two, because it just the Estus Flask changed everything. And so the Estus Flaskification of other items, like, like and making them part of the, the move set, essentially, for a fight, and then it's a, a risk-reward choice about when to use it, as opposed to just, oh, I'm going to run out of this thing and be sad, is cool. One of the roughest, for me, the worst thing about Bloodborne is the fact that it went back to Blood Vials instead of Estus Flasks. So it's like, okay... Here's a supply of healing items that replenishes over time, but also you genuinely can just run out. And then fuck you. This game just ran out of healing items. You have to go farm healing items now. Like... The... There's a lot of tension and interesting stuff that comes from the resource management of a survival horror game. But crucially, when you die in Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, you go back to a last checkpoint or last save that you did in a, in a save room and your resources are what they were back then. But in Souls games, you you die using up all your resources and then you, you respawn and all your resources are still gone and you accomplish nothing. You still have to do everything again, but also everything you used is gone and it's deeply frustrating. Uh, and so I, don't, I just don't really get why they brought back... Brought, brought, back blood vials when they had uh, Estus flasks already, and they've been happy to go back to versions of Estus flasks ever since, and so does er basically every Souls like. Like, everyone agrees. Estus flask, good idea for this genre. Uh, it's like, as much as Souls like equals stamina bar and rolling during combat and, and uh, animation priority, uh, the Estus flask always finds its way in, because uh, it, no one will call it a bespoke part of the genre. But it's just such a good idea that how, why would you handle it any other way? So I, I hate that the blood, Bloodborne brought back blood vials, and I don't like that several other consumables are handled that way when they could be handled more interestingly. Because it is really cool. Like, we've been playing Tekken 8 lately, and Tekken 8's really interesting because uh, it doesn't have a super meter the way that Street Fighter and other fighting games have where you attacking makes a meter go up, and then you spend that meter during the fight and so on. Uh, instead, Tekken 8 has two different things that are kind of like a super meter. It has a heat meter, where if you hit red bumper, you enter into this heat mode where all of your attacks are stronger, and they do chip damage when your enemy blocks, and then you can press the button again to spend it all at once to do a super attack, essentially, in a way that's kind of like getting all three power stones in Power Stone. Like, you go into this heightened state, and you can fight normally for a little while, but you can also press a button to end your, your heightened state and do a super move. And, like, that's all neat. But then there's also a... Instead of having uh, your super super, like, your actual super attack, be uh, a complex input that you have to do when you have a specific level of charge over the course of the fight, they made it so that just when you're low on health, there's a damn there's a there's a critical state where you can then just activate your super with right trigger and just go, and that makes it an interesting thing where it's like okay the heat and the super are both things you can only do once per round, one of them you can do at any time and then once it's gone it's gone, and the other one you can do at a specific part of the fight, and that just becomes two different resources and they're kind of like you know like spend them like you know use it or lose it mechanics, where it's like well it's here why not use it. And so that, that's what's very interesting about giving me this grinder. Like, yes, using special grindstones during a... Uh, using, using special grindstones during a... Like, just the world stuff is uh, 
Sorry, I started trying to multitask, and that's this is why I don't multitask. This is why I don't try to play the game while I do my rants sometimes, is because the moment I try to, I'm like, oh, I was like, I should level. Uh, the moment I start trying to think about the other thing, it's so hard, much harder to keep the, 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 my train of thought clear and coherent and, and structured and so on. But like, yes, uh, there is a question of if or when I should use my grindstone during exploration, and maybe you save it for like the one tough looking dude, and just hope that that was in fact the tough looking dude of this particular zone. But during boss fights, it's like, okay, here's a, here's a grindstone. You can use it once during boss fight to go into the state for like 15 seconds of having a, your the special effect on your weapon. When are you going to do that? Do you want to open with it? Do you want to do it during the phase transition? Do you want to activate it when you successfully do... Because uh, it takes time to do also, so there's like a bit of a risk there. Do you do it when you successfully get your enemy into the white state and then do your super attack on them and then they're down for a second and you're like, okay, well now I'll use the grindstone and then I'll press my advantage to try to put them back into the white state faster. I, I, yes, I do keep calling it the white state because it's just when the meter goes white and because there's so much made up terminology in this game that doesn't that isn't congruent with the other games that I I can't keep it all straight. It's, this, it's easier sometimes just use terms that are like, you know what I mean, instead of trying to use the correct terms and then using the actually incorrect terms and just actively miscommunicating what I mean, which would be frustrating for everybody. Anyway. I believe I'm looking for 97. That should give me another level. Whatever choice you make. I'm the listener. I listen. You won't believe what these ears can catch. I'm gonna listen so good, baby. Alright, uh... Acquired ergo, 10,000. Current ergo, 9,100 in the thingy. We're not gonna make it. Nope. Got a bit, bit more motivity, though. But yeah, given my usual struggles with these things, uh... There's a lot of resources I'm afraid to use because of the fact that they're so limited use. And also, it's such a tight, comfortable little cycle of moves that you get used to using when you learn how to survive in this genre against the adversity of the early experiences of it just crushing you. That it's surprisingly hard, at least for me, to adopt new moves into my moveset. Did this just wrap around back to here and I didn't actually open up anything new? That's still not open. Huh. Maybe I can climb this building on this side and just st st missed the spot. Ow. Oh, I'm in slow mode. Okay, I'm having trouble finding the chance to use these arms in order to incorporate them and think about them actively. There's a fire over there. Ow, that hurt. Oh. There's just a whole path over here. Huh. I'm definitely gonna get up there at some point, though. That was like an oddly out-of-the-way checkpoint, wasn't it? Oh, the rocks that I heard about. Are they coming? There they go. Okay. It's to cover a fairly large amount of ground. So it should be pretty safe. There's one going across the top, too. Hi! Eh. Stop it! Okay. Very rude. Um, how far do I have to run? That's a bit nerve wracking. I can see why the window is pretty forgiving so far, because. Uh, okay. Beware of the rocks, they say. 
Was that the glow of there's a nearby butterfly? Oh, I thought I turned to red. I didn't have the best trajectory mapped out of where exactly it comes from in that part. This chair is so loud. I switched to the other chair, too. I thought this one was less loud. It's mixed. Uh, I have one chair where the seat pops a lot, and this one, the it's the arms that pop a lot, and I sit, I sit like an asshole. I have this. I have a desire to sit cross-legged or in a variety of different positions that aren't just feet on ground all day. Probably because it means not sitting on my ass all day. But that's like sofa behavior, and because I'm working all day, I'm on a. I'm at a computer chair. Once upon a time, a long time ago, <sighs> distant land, a long time ago. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah? Yeah? Eh. Once upon a time, I had a computer chair that was wide enough for me to sit cross-legged in, and little did I know how good I had it at the time. And I've missed it ever since. So the, the seat flattened out, and it got so uncomfortable, and it had other issues, and I was like, time to upgrade! And then fucking that upgrade got worse. It does just fall straight down out of this hole in the ceiling, so I'm safe here. You fucker! I'm gonna die. Nope. Yeah, I've missed it ever since because I've never been able to comfortably sit fully cross legged since. So I kind of end up pushing into the arms and being sad. One of these days I might go full weird and just have a sofa chair pointing at a computer desk and maybe I will have reached Nirvana. I think I want to move first instead of having to transfer. <gasps> instead of having to travel with that chair. Uh, I don't know, this is just all behind the scenes trap. I mean, there's not much to discuss about the dodge the boulders level, admittedly. This is perfect time to just go talking about whatever I feel like. Speaking of, go watch Dead Laws. It's, it might be done by now. I don't know. Fucking, I have no idea how this lines up. I don't even know how long Dead Laws will be. I don't know if it's going to be shorter or longer than Cape Escape. I struck. Oh my god, they're just falling straight down the hole. I guess this is the end of one of the tracks. It down here? Nope. Got the jingle. It must be forward. There it is. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Perhaps. Bad guy. Ooh. Just gotta believe in yourself and stuff. Oh, big boy. Oh, it's a bear. It's an entire bear. Oh, I don't know if the traps are gonna work on this one. <laughs> oh, it looks like the mimic bear. Oh, it's our it's got weird human arms. I'm upsetty. Right, my 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 one of my goals was to do this more, and then I just immediately forgot. I just don't know where to fit it in. Out. God damn it. Is it doing it? Am I doing enough stun damage? I think one of my issues might be the fact that the game doesn't show me a meter. 
there's no sector though thing where you can see the stun meter. So you can't judge how effective things are against it. So you can't tell if you're doing a good job. So you can't tell like, is it better just to hit him really hard with my giant heavy weapon or just slowly charge up this other weird lightning thing that I'm not super comfortable with and hope it technically does more stun damage than my normal weapon. Cause it's probably gonna do mass, like massively little. That's not a good way to phrase that. But it's, it's just not gonna do much in the way of like damage damage probably. My, my real weapon will. I'm hoping to cause a stun in a way that's like more worthwhile or something. Did I get my remains back? Did I remember to do that? Maybe. Okay, my, my train of thought a long time ago was just that I was trying to say, before I kind of got sidetracked by, by a bunch of other thoughts, is just that the, uh, it is, uh-oh. Uh-uh. It is, uh, a, a compliment. It is a sign that a game has done a good job at something if I start using the new combat mechanic, like, at all. <laughs> In so many cases, I just will not do it. And this isn't just a Souls-like problem. It's just like a this game has an established gameplay loop and tools that I'm used to using, and you have to really sell me on the idea of bothering to do a new one. Like, if I'm playing a stealth game, and they give me all new wacky gadgets that totally solve specific problems that the game itself also constantly poses to me because stealth's kind of a puzzle and the levels are built around the new mechanic, then boom, suddenly I'm probably going to use this new mechanic and adopt it pretty cleanly. But then you get Assassin's Creed Revelations, a bad game, uh, with one of the, f I think the first bad Assassin's Creed as far as, or at least the f first one that was noticeably worse because the first, like one, two, and Brotherhood had a decent trajectory. Even if you go back now, one seems kind of both, I don't know, both interesting and extremely bare bones and so on. This feels like a fight. But like, in Assassin's Creed Revelation had a tutorial about bomb crafting at the beginning. And then, uh, throughout the game I would pick up parts for bombs. Uh-oh. Okay, we're... But then I proceeded to never use that mechanic the entire playthrough. <laughs> in the charge state. Damn, I like didn't get hit. Whew! Leaping amulet. Like, I always think of that as just a... of a game that's just a completely superfluous mechanic that was just added to try to make... It justified as a, as a sequel, essentially, is that Assassin's Creed Revelation added bomb crafting. And I think that never came up again in the, the games I played after that. And I never used it in the game it was introduced in. I don't think there was even, like, a tutorial level that you needed to do, use it for to reasonably beat. It was just like, hey, you can grab bombs if you want. Anyway, here's the story missions. And then I just did all the story missions and I just played them like every other Assassin's Creed games with no no changes to my behavior. But I think my brain is weird and then I like will just simplify mechanics out of entirely out of a game if I can get away with it. Like I'll use the mechanics that work for me and you have to really sometimes you have to like push me to really adopt other mechanics. And sometimes I can't tell if I'm seeing the real game and everyone else is wrong or if I am like uh I think that's a, you might be able to walk in that precarious thing I don't know if I want to go in or out yet let's see sometimes I feel like I'm seeing the real game and everyone else is just kind of like making up a version of the game based on advertising that never is, or actually was the lived experience of playing it 
And sometimes I think I just didn't get to experience a, a game because I just didn't adapt to what everyone else loved about it. And it's hard to tell the difference. Like, uh, Bullet Storm was a game that everyone's like, Oh my god, there's so much self-expression and it's such a playful little sandbox. Look at all the stuff you can do. And I'm like, this is just a game that is just a shooter where you can kick people. Like, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just a shooter, but you can kick people. So, like, sometimes there's a spike wall, and if you kick someone to the spike wall, like, Ugh! And you got him. Like, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. And it's like, well, that's... Okay, so I can't adopt, I can't use this. I wanted to make sure this time. Because it'd be a great way to kill those bosses for free. Well, now I can go kill them, uh, and see if they drop anything cool. Hopefully if I unlock a shortcut or something. Like, to this day, and I haven't spent that much time on it because it's, it's, it's fucking Bulletstorm, who cares? But, uh, I've never really been that convinced that Bulletstorm is all that interesting. And I kind of feel like people were, like, hyping up the idea of what they thought it was on paper and what they hoped it would be. More so than the actual lived experience of just like it just being like a kind of generic shooter with a sense of humor and some energy to it, but overall not that big of a deal. So that's definitely the next zone. So the, going down is my chance to go down and maybe open up a shortcut from behind. There's also a cultural context maybe where I'm like Bulletstorm is being a wacky, more arcadey, sort of boomer shootery kind of feel. Is made by the people people can fly who made boomer shooters before they started making uh, working on Gears of War games. Now, if your target audience is Gears of War, ah, stop! Really? Right at the shortcut. If your target audience is Call of Duty and Gears of War players, then maybe that game does feel like a breath of fresh air and a wild new experience because of its energy, the type of energy it has. I have to do the entire boulder level again because he killed me right at the shortcut. No, I don't. The slider's here. <laughs> but as the counterpoint, like, while I feel like I... Well, I feel like I was right and everybody else was overhyping and misrepresenting uh, Bulletstorm, I do feel like I kind of missed the fun of Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, a game that's, and I guess the difference between those two is that one of them is like, one of them's a wacky shooter, and the other one is a an immersive sim. With a bunch of interlocking mechanics that do things, and I do kind of feel like I missed the best way to approach Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. It's just that it's it can be tough because like, semi-stealth games it can be hard to commit to the stealth because the moment a single thing goes wrong, you like kind of permanently lose that entire level to the lack of stealth, and now it's just an action level. Oh god, don't do it again! God, that's so much damage. The way I get screwed over by not making contact with these attacks sometimes. There we go. Then once combat starts in those kinds of games, it can be hard to, like, properly react and, like, manipulate AI and figure out, like, an opportunity to do cool tr stuff. So I end up just being like, uh, just, just hit him! Fuck! And hope for the best. But then I'm puzzled by a game like, uh, am I turning red? I'm puzzled by a game like Deathloop because... I look at the demo footage that's showing off how cool the game is on the store page, and I'm like... You guys are claiming this game's about self-expression and cool moves and all that, but... Even on your store page, the super cool way of fighting a guy is just playing with a corpse. Like, if you watch- if you look at the store page for Deathloop, the first gif you'll see on the store page is... Uh... It's the protagonist, uh, oh god, let's watch out. It's the protagonist, uh, taking somebody out from behind that's at a ledge. The problem being that once you've played the game, oh god. Once you've played that game, you know that the first hit that landed on that, on the, 
that he landed was already the kill. So every wacky little thing he does after that is just the protagonist playing with a corpse. Like, haha, Gmod Ragdoll. I made the corpse do bounce with a combo that means nothing because the guy's already dead and the rest of what I do to him is not mechanically relevant. I look at stuff like that and I'm like, is that what people mean? When they talk about it, like having crazy gameplay freedom is kill kill the guy the same way every single time, but you get to play with the corpse a little bit afterwards. Ah, oh, damn it. St the state disappeared. To this day, I'm still not entirely sure what people like about Deathloop when they do like it. Or what the developer wanted gameplay to seem like, because it's so restrictive and linear when you get down to it. And the gameplay isn't just it just isn't that interesting for what it is. But I could have missed the point. That's part of the big nightmare mess that is games teaching you how to play them in that whole album. That was an entire quartz. Okay, well I'm definitely killing the other one in case it drops to quartz too. That's great. That is like the best news I could have gotten. I was gonna comment on this earlier, but like I've been killing a bunch of butterflies and whatnot, which are supposed to be like crystal lizards. They're supposed to drop like the big special stuff that I want. And increasingly they're dropping stuff where I'm not even entirely sure what it's for, or I'm past the point of needing it, or there are other just kind of semi-obscure things that just don't seem relevant. Kind of not bothering right now with the the whole mechanic. There we go. That's another quartz. That's good. Now I guess I'll go, go ahead and go backwards then, and grab this one, and then I'll use the shortcut afterwards. But I'm not going to bother using a cure because I'm going to go back and spend these quartzes now. Yeah, there's an interesting thing to unpack there where. Uh, With immersive sims and whatnot. On one hand, you need to teach the player how to play the game. And part of that is... Trying to disallow them from being boring. Without also making the game so punishing and miserable that they literally can't even figure out how to like latch onto it in the first place. But if you just let the player be boring the whole time and get away with that old game, then there's a lot, not a lot of incentive to experiment with the mechanics. And sometimes it'll feel like the boring approach just works consistently, just playing it like a normal video game that isn't from that genre, and experimenting with the mechanics actively fucks you over. So you're like, why would I do that? Yeah. Whatever choice you. But I want to feel clever and cool and stuff. I haven't played that much of the series, and the one I played was Absolution, the worst one, but. I get the feeling that the Hitman series is surprise is pretty decent at that, in particular because it's a game about replay value. Like especially the new ones look like they're all about you replaying the same missions over and over again and finding new approaches to your old problems, and it's like, okay. That encourages you to iterate and find the fun and do different things, whereas most video games, even immersive sins, are not gonna be about you replaying the same mission. And so since you're always adapting to new scenarios, it's harder for you to actively experiment. But anyway. Whatever choice you make, I shall wait. Kind of just rambling about whatever, because this is admittedly kind of a boring level. Not like bad. It's just it's got extremely video gamey obstacles and we're just kind of navigating them and what's happening on the screen is so self-evident there's not much to comment on 
Look out for the big boulders. Look out for the big tower that shoots the gun at you. Use cover, cat. Cats and dogs can get along. See? I guess I guess that means I'm becoming human, and that's why it's it likes me instead of before when I was more of a doll because I'm lying so much or something. That's probably what that means. Increase the number of pulse cell uses, increase the attack of Fable Arts, those are both great. Should now not be able to use attack or survival. Ability type, let's check the newest ones first. Restores weapon durability when using special grindstones, that's okay. Lowers the legion cost of legion arms, I never used that really. Enhances Fable charging on fatal attacks. This is a good example of me not knowing what the fuck the game's saying. <laughs> like, what does this string of words even mean? Enhances Fable charging upon fatal attacks. Is a fatal attack the thing you do when somebody is vulnerable? So it means it recharges my Fable meter in that situation? Ch uh, charges a certain amount of Legion when an enemy is eliminated. Oh. That's kind of neat. It's just for level clearing though, not for boss fights, but... It means my Legion regenerates a bit during fight during levels. Gradually restores durability of inactive we equipped weapons. I don't use more than one. Charges Fable upon reviving. That's tempting because it's, it's an ongoing complaint of mine that I don't have the ability to transform my weapon. It's just, it hurts a little bit to pick up. It hurts a little bit to spend my course on something that's like avoidable though, as opposed to something that's always helpful. It's just the, the struggle there. Use wish stones quickly. I don't use any wish stones. Lowers the weapon durability reduction of your character's weight increases. As your character's weight increases. Um. So the heavier you are, you are you're, the longer your weapons last, I think? Increases the effect duration of consumables with prolonged effects. Increases the possession limit of throwing objects, which I don't use. Possession limit of consumables. Increase the maximum amount of gold coin fruit on, on the gold coin tree. Don't care about that. Increases the amount of ergo gained from eliminating enemies. Increases the maximum amount of gold coin and gold of it. Enhances the charge effect of Legion Magazine. Reduces item prices. Fable Catalyst. Increases the effect of consumables for prolonged effects. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I'm really doing an item build. I made my grindstone stronger. And I did early on get more pick to get more uh Ergo from enemy eliminations. If I can swap that out, I might. I well, I think I'm gonna have to respec from scratch though from the, from that other mechanic. But uh, I think at the time I was like, that's cool, I'll grab that. And I didn't realize that the budget system of like having to pick from each tree once. See, I definitely I think I mostly want to spam attack and survival type and then I'd pick ability type when I can't do anything else. I think I'll get fable charging on fatal attacks. I should google it real quick. Lies of P fatal attack. Auto completed. It's a powerful mechanic that we yeah. Oh yeah, it even shows little slashes. Okay, yeah, that's immediately what I'm thinking about. Okay, so that's cool. Whenever I successfully cause a fatal attack, I'll charge my fable as a result. Which should be good because that's the other thing I'm trying to use. I'm my loop is trying to Cause a stagger so I can do fatal attacks, and then I also want to charge up my fa my fable so I can find an open opening to do my big fable combo. So working on both of those is a good goal. Those are two of the things I'm working towards. Okay, so now I now have breaks the enemy's stance when a perfect guard is successful, and perfect guard's one of my big goals. That's the that's the parry mechanic, I believe. So. 
That should be a cool upgrade to have. We'll see what it actually looks like in action at some point. Increase the maximum number of Fable slots is pretty good. Amulet slots is okay. I might have to go for the Fable one, honestly. Alright, bottom, bottom of attack again. When you're out of pulse cells, it gets stronger. Reduce the amount of enemy HP recovery when attacking with a weapon. This just lets enemies recover less health. If that works on boss fights, that's actually pretty good, because they seem to recover a fair amount of health over the course of the fight. That's tempting. Yeah. Hopefully that works against boss fights, because, yeah. One of the things that makes boss fights feel so tough is the fact that they kind of are recovering in a... Like, like the infamous uh, Elden Ring boss fight. Melania. Except she's life leeching. She has a weapon that steals health. And my biggest gripe about that is the fact that she steal she has life leech when you block. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm blocking her attack. She's only hurting my stamina right now. What do you mean she's currently getting healing from this? She should have to deal damage at least. That's what life leeches. You you heal from damage. Like a vampire. Vampires don't suck on shields and go, ha, my sustenance. That would really simplify their whole curse. <laughs> Between I should maybe double check to see if I ever got a better upgrade. Yeah, I don't have a new type of moonstone yet. And yep, those guys are dead. They did not respawn. That was a, that was a good amount of quartz to find. Whoa! Uh. It still didn't drop anything that good. <laughs> and that one actually fought back, but not very well. I took a tiny amount of damage. Why are these guys- I don't care. Why are these guys respawn- are they respawning? It feels like there's so many. But yeah, a sign that this is not an especially uh, involved level is the way that like... It actually- it has almost no like shortcut mechanics even happening to begin with. Thank god that when you break those turrets, they stay dead. That's a permanent change to the environment, so you can just repeatedly go after what you want to go after then. Yeah, we we rarely revisit the same Stargazer. We've had some levels that do the full, like, Surge 1 thing where they're, uh... Direction of Crot Central Station. Oh, this could be bad, pal. Really, really bad. Whatever's bad, I'll hit it with my sword. But yeah, there's parts of it that almost feel like they're doing the surge one thing where they're almost like fetishistic about reusing the same bonfire over and over again. Where it's like, Jesus Christ, this level loops back to the same bonfire seven times? Except in Surge 1, you couldn't tell where you were ever, because the level was so so, like, just not, you just couldn't, you couldn't look at it, you couldn't tell what anything was or where you were. Sentry's Notebook. It's stained with green sap. Why in the world is that thing even here in Krat? I thought they were joking when the city dispatched me to catch the monster. I figured it was probably a broken puppet or a bear with the petrification disease. That green thing is huge. What on earth did it eat in the swamp to grow so big? I don't think it's the waste problem. I've observed it. It's obsessively... It obsessively protects its nest and likes to bring its toys there. The puppets... The puppet bodies aren't used just as toys. 
That thing sucks ergo from scrapped puppets before playing with what's left. It feeds on ergo, and that's why it grows so big. The whole area is a feast for it. I need to report this. Blasted bastards. Screw you all. I think that green guy was made by the alchemist for sure. Or he's their mistake. How else can you can they ignore our backup requests like this? They're always like this. Something is unfavorable. They just ignore it. Why did they send us? Are we prey? Not hunters? That guy is watching us more and more. He definitely knows we're here. He's looking at us. Like we're toys. Someone hurriedly scribbled a note. Guard post captured soon. Lost control of Ballista. Impossible to take back. I ask for forgiveness for all the sins of my life. The angel will guide us. I don't think it worked out for them. The big group. So something is huge. I wonder how huge. Is that a character character? It looks like a dog mask. Look at that goofy mask. Are you a fan of Aladoros or something? Is this the fan club? Such a goofy little... That's so funny. Uh, hey, are you a treasure hunter too? Strange to me someone in my line of work. I know how this looks, but I'm not a thief or anything. <laughs> I am on a serious expedition. You wouldn't happen to know a, a treasure hunter named Aladoro, would you? I'm a big fan. I plan my expeditions to follow Alidoro's traces, but ugh, this lock has me at a dead end, and I so wanted to explore the Hermit's Cave. Oh, all I can do is keep plugging away. If you come back by, say hello. Maybe I'll get this place open. Come back later? That's interesting. Or do I open it for him? And it's just false signposting a little bit because they don't usually do stuff on their own. It's always a good sign with the character designs when I can just clock what his deal is immediately. Granted, he did say Aladoro out loud. But, he, but the, I'm like, he's an Aladoro fanboy, that's why he's got a goofy, like, homemade version of the mask. Life is short, and life in Krat is shorter. I reckon I should cherish what time I've got. All I can do is keep plugging away. Uh, if you come back by, say hello. Maybe I'll get this place open. You never heard of Alidoro? He's a treasure hunter and one of the best. And unlike a lot of the riffraff in Krat, he's not a thief. He's a pro who excavates antiquities methodically. And professionalism is important when you're talking about Ergo. Just mention Ergo and everyone cares about the history behind the ruins. That's why Alidoro has the reputation he does. The quality of his information and the condition of the antiquities are on another level. I know there are rumors about Alidoro lately, but I know jealousy when I hear it. The rumors? <laughs> well, for starters, they're nonsense. Alidoro is the last person you'd suspect of crimes like fraud and theft and assault. It's crazy. I've even seen a wanted poster of him. Those alchemists must be behind it. Those guys act like they own the ruins and they don't want treasure hunters to earn an honest living. I mean, come on. We're talking about the Alidoro who saved all those lives in the workshop tower rubble. So, no, I don't believe a word of it. Ugh, would you get a load of this? I grabbed it as a souvenir, but it's just malicious propaganda. You take it. Wanted Aladoro. A con man who calls himself a treasure hunter, wears a hound mask, charged with fraud, impersonation, theft, assault, and other serious crimes. He's very good at tricking people, so watch out. Hmm. A con man. 
What I'm wondering is, is he impersonating the real Alidoro? Because this person's a fan and doesn't believe the rumors, but that could still be true if he was always a fraud. But the other person says that he lost a finger, and Alidoro isn't missing a finger. So he's impersonating somebody with the wrong number of fingers. He also just kind of seems like a prick. It's very funny that I'm impersonating him this whole game with his mask, but it's just... None of the other animal masks compete. <laughs> uh... Huh. I had a train of thought, and I done lost it. I was thinking about Argo a little bit, my uh, my Dead Laws character, because there's just some similar stuff going on there. Life is short, and all I can do is keep my treasure. Well, this is what I've got so far. It's a cryptic vessel, a sort of cipher device, but I don't know how it works. I don't want to throw it away. I think it's a clue to some stolen goods. I found it between the corpses of two thieves who died fighting over it. You know what they say, no honor among thieves. But I can't make heads or tails of it. If you want it, it's yours. An old cryptic vessel. An encrypted storage device in the shape of a metal cylinder. Benini might be able to decode this device if you ask him. The storage devices that hide secrets using encryptions were popular among Krat upper class. Naturally, the decoding devices targeted the rest of the population were also popular, but most have been destroyed. Hmm. I wonder if this might give us what we need to know about this guy, who's definitely lying. It's just kind of hard in a game in a story like this to hide the fact that he's lying so it's not exactly subtle uh because if you, it'd be really relatively hard to telegraph it without just giving it away and so they kind of just have which is fine Alrighty, i think i relocated one of our quests which i believe she was looking for the difficult to pronounce wine bottle by difficult to pronounce i mean i don't i don't remember what it's called to begin with so i am not going to try to guess this pronunciation ah lovely we even in the bottle, it has a distinctive shade of red. Oh, thank you, young one. Every step is a struggle when you have the petrification disease. But this, this glimmer of happier days is priceless. Oh, why, you almost forgot. Speaking of price, here's what I can spare. Please, take it. Benini commemorative coin. Hmm. The Benini commemorative coins were minted for limited edition sale at the Benini fan club's anniversary. It was a magnificent event attended by cross socialites and celebrities. Well, I'll see about that. We're down to just one more thing that I haven't found yet necessarily, but we'll get to that at some point. I open episodes with them because I, I, I between episodes I can like, let's just wander around for a little while and then I'll start the episode when I actually have any idea what I'm looking for. Hello. House of Vanini, even priceless things have a price. Every item is a treasure of distinguished quality and superior provenance. There's the coin. Strike a light. You find a commemorative coin dating from the founding of the Vanini Foundation. The Foundation is a sort of fan club, sir. A very limited number of these were minted for the original members. Well, once Master Venini established himself as the <clears throat> Prince of High Society, his popularity skyrocketed, and his signature coat and glasses were mass-produced. This is one of the originals, however, from the limited run. Take care of it, won't you? You have restored Master Venini's lost collection. 
You've earned this small token of appreciation, sir. Thank you. At the house of Vanini, even priceless things have a price. Every item is a treasure of distinguished quality and superior provenance. I hear there is a new guest at the hotel, and that you had a little something to do with that. I just find saving people is its own reward. I certainly don't need the money. <laughs> Even strangers. Everyone deserves some help now and then. If we who live through times like this don't live the best lives we can, we dishonor the memories of all we have lost. Honoring the lost is why I do what I do. In a way, I envy the dead. They don't have to know what it's like to remember that they're gone. <laughs> And here I go again. Blah, 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 and who cares? Huh? Now, let's get out there and save my... That is, our city. There you are. Now, just leave this to me. Done and done. You will find Venini always seeks to rise to the challenge at hand. Old cryptic vessel description. Decryption. An old shack in the tomb slums in Malum district. Look for the bleak tree and laundry line and enter the shack next to him. Old shack in the tomb slums of Malum district. I never found the other one either, huh? They're hard. At least the other one was hard, because I thought I'd got it and I just could not get there. An agreement is attached for mutual trust. I kept hiding the stolen goods in the barren swamp and realizing something. Ah, I'm never going to return if I, if I keep going to the swamp. All I've known is the life of a thief, but I don't want to die now. So we're returning to our sweet home. Even if the Black Rabbit Brotherhood's making trouble, we were technically before them in the Malum District. In the slums, you follow the slum rules. First, bring the stolen goods to, to our old base. We may be dumb, but we're loyal. Unlike the rich. Here's to a lifelong friendship. Ah. Uh, some shack. Look for the bleak tree and laundry line to enter the shack next to them. Hmm. I'm always iffy on scavenger hunting because I'm doing a playthrough and I'm just like, what if I just waste 20 minutes? You really struggled last time. Let's see, you had some new talk. I always welcome... Ah, <laughs> the Grand Covenant. You're not asking much, are you? <laughs> Very well. Geppetto himself created it and I... God help me, I made it work. It's in every puppet, uh, a sort of conscience. And in theory, it should have prevented anything like the puppet frenzy ever happening. It's because we don't truly understand ergo, at least that's my view. Sometimes ergo-driven puppets gain what we call awakened egos. Individuality, more or less. Which is a dangerous thing if someone's not ready to handle it. Though that is rare. Or used to be. Hence, the Grand Covenant. Humanity's safety net. But it did not work. The puppet frenzy happened anyway. And I still don't know how. So, the King of Puppets, how did he get around the Covenant, I wonder? He used the Ergo Wavelengths, but what did he do to their consciences? However, it's a different story when a single puppet cracks the safety device of so many puppets. Does the Grand Covenant break when their ego awakens? 
Or did someone cause the frenzy after lifting the Grand Covenant? If it's the former, the King of Puppets is the culprit. If it's the latter, the King of Puppets is a means to an end. I am but a simple, brilliant genius and a man about town. I do not pretend to be otherwise. That is why I'm asking you to solve this. Everything depends on what you do now and your choices. Hmm. Speaking on the outside level, just whenever a game dumps on you... Oh, there's multiple interpretations of this concept. There's the one that's simple and the one that has additional depth to it. You're like, well, then that's the answer. <laughs> that's going to be what the narrative is, because... Why would you suggest at greater depth of what it could mean, and then be like, eh. Alright, how about we get back to this mess? What could go wrong? I just need to stab everybody. Slash everybody. Slam everyone, buddy. I guess I left and came back. I mean, in Souls game logic, that sometimes means things have updated, but I don't know. Life is short, and all I can do is keep plugging away. Life is all I can do. Step back. <laughs> Does it always say that? Not like leave or stop talking. Step back. Uh, look how textured that ground is. It's so good at hiding where they put uh oh <laughs> it's so good at hiding where they put the uh the bear traps Rotro. <laughs> okay didn't realize i was walking right into this like a lobstery thingy kind of crawdaddy crawdad crawdaddy haha <laughs> it looks way smaller and outside of the cutscene <laughs> no not the George decay ow Ah, so slow. God, it's so slow. Which paradoxically makes it hard. Now. Wow, he's caked up to the nines. Anyway. <laughs> Halfway through that cutscene, I was like, hang on a minute. Hang on a gosh dang minute. I need to... I never tried that ring on. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about in the middle of the cutscene. Free stamina cover speed. Damn it. Well, we don't need the puppets one. HP, Stamina, and Legion. I, let's see what the numbers are. 573161. 573161. 573161. 573161. 573161. 573161. 573161. 573161. Oh, you can see the change right now. Gains 11 stamina and. Bleh. 27 health? Oh. <laughs> Well, not the biggest change, huh? You can literally see how much health rate there it added, and it's just really not very encouraging at that point, is it? 
Uh, I already have this one too. Okay, so let's see which how much that one adds to. Five, three, six. So this one adds forty to my stamina. It adds like almost twice as much, but not or to my health, but not my stamina. By comparison, it looks uh, basically the same. Okay, so two, these two combined to give me more health overall, and that's about it. Increases max stamina, reduces weapon durability, restores hate. Yeah, these get. Hmm. A lot of these are so weak that I'm like, I don't know if any of them are useful. I wonder if I should think this thing counts as a carcass because it does infection damage and things. Oh well. The amulets are pretty over are pretty underwhelming. It makes me it second guess it makes me second guess the idea of him getting the other thing. There are really, really heavy amulets that actually do good stuff. I don't know if even those ones are like good enough. Alright, I think I should probably go back to blocking more again. I think I'm blowing it by not doing that enough. <clears throat> Tunneling. <laughs> I was running! Damn! That's usually enough. I wonder if it's an easier fight at long distance. Nope, that was too early. I'm gonna die of the same combo again. Immediately. Eww. Is it making goop on the floor? Not really. Nope, he's doing that again. I thought he was gonna tentacle. He didn't do this last time at all. Oh, fuck. No, oh, that's a long distance attack. Well. Are you proud of me, daddy? Attempts were made. Alright, well this is a different kind of fight. Just kind of takes up different space. Occupies the field differently. Has different ranges. Just not the usual dude jumping at me and swinging a weapon. Ah! Wow, I really got on the first try and then... The first two tries then stopped. God damn it, fucking block anything correctly. Ow, that's new. Alright, calm down, Abretus. No. What is the timing of that dodge? Because running doesn't seem to work. That's what I tried the first time. Oh god. I heard that tracks like crazy. God, I'm just being shredded. God, it's so slow. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to do this. Fuck. Oh, it has a range limit. What? I died to the goop. The goop not only does it. Ah. Uh... Okay, this one just has a lot of fucking things happening. So that was two surprises. I thought, oh, the goop does a status effect. Oh no. But no, the goop not only does damage in real time very heavily, like, it's like getting hit by the rake by that other guy, it actively stuns you every second it's hitting you. 
unlike a lot of goop and things that's just like, oh no, I'm getting affected by a status effect. It's like, no, you're actively being stopped from being able to interact. Damn, okay. I usually feel like I get the fight more in the first attempt than this. Whereas I'm getting surprised a lot still. Ah! God, never! Ah! God! If you get frustrated watching me get hit by ex extremely telegraphed attacks... Yeah, me too. <laughs> I literally... I'm, I so clearly see it, and I'm just like, why can't I ever time anything correctly? I know... I, I see it. None of it! None of it! Not even one hit. God damn it. Finally. Yep. Ow. No, it all missed. Oh, I died. Fuck, I spent all that time recharging both my meter and then adding the thing. My health was also low? I also needed healing? Shit. Maybe. Or maybe it was the decay? I don't know how fast decay effect goes. Unfortunately, it's it hits me with decay like all the time. I'm not making any headway right now. I mean, I got more than halfway through the fight, but... Doesn't feel amazing. No. Nah, I didn't turn. No. God damn it, that was so good. I should have half his health in no time. It paid off so well being that aggressive. But then I just fucking missed the timing on the counter. Probably could have blocked, maybe. It was just hard to recover. But I got him in I got him half dead and then in white state that quickly. Which means that that was going to be a damage spike if I get one good hit on him. Did something weird. I started spamming uncharged right stick, right, uh, uncharged heavy attacks. I forgot to do the thing. No, I thought he was going to puke. I'm so bad at telling what all the attacks are. No, way too early, man. Ah. And my weapon's broken already. God damn. What a shit show. 
<sighs> this one's tough. The thing that gets fucked up in my brain is that when I grab my souls and then I get a blue meter and then I transform my weapon, I usually feel like, okay, that's it. I finished. I finished preparing. And then I stop thinking. And then I forget any other things I was planning on doing before the fight started. Oh. Fuck, I don't know what to do about that attack. I outranged it once, but that's literally, like, bigger than the whole level in distance. Okay, well... <laughs> the bad attempts go real fast. I think I have a problem where I struggle to, uh... counter anything by actually hitting it early. I just inherently want to hit the button right when the attack is hitting, which is obviously not correct because if you're if you get even one frame into the damage happening, like I don't know the fucking exact mechanics of how it works, but like just logically, if the damage applies, then the attack's already hit and you can't do anything about that. Cuz like uh in a rhythm game, you can hit a note early or late by a small margin, and this and both are equally valid for counting towards being accurate in when you hit the note. But in parrying systems, being slightly late is not good enough, and I think I am more likely to be slightly late than slightly early. So I have to try I have to just like try to figure out how to be earlier, and that really fucks with my brain because a lot of these attacks are delayed on purpose. To kind of faint you and like, here it comes, here comes the big telegraphed attack, and then the guy kind of slumbles or kind of stumbles or kind of leans slightly before the attack actually goes off, and it gives you these extra milliseconds of "fuck you," it still hasn't happened, ha ha ha, where they're fucking with you, and so, like, I have to try to delay long enough to not get tricked by the faints, but also press it early enough that I'm not accidentally pressing it slightly late, because on a regular basis, I, I think I hit it perfectly with like right when the attack's landing. But that isn't actually how it works. You have to be earlier. But I. But then if I try to think about being earlier, it's like, well, I'm. I, then I'm just gonna be too early, which happens all the time. Just, I'm, I'm really having trouble. I'm just so bad at parrying mechanics. But this guy has so many red attacks that even if I am spamming block, I don't think I can get away with that. And I sometimes try to dodge red attacks because people keep pointing out that some red attacks can be sidestepped, but I don't think this is one of them. Ah. Oh, god damn it, you didn't fucking turn. That's so annoying. God damn it. Okay. Oh, he's right in front of me. That makes that timing hard. Oh, it didn't land. I did it too early. Oh, God damn it. Ah. We're, come on, we're good. Just block. One more slap. There we go. Fuck, this is phase one. Oh my god, this is phase one! No! No! Right, the whole thing about how it's collecting puppets. Maybe phase two is easier, ha 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 ha!
narrator. It was not. It was not fucking easier. You idiot. You fool. Please don't die before the fight starts. <laughs> What are you shaped like anymore? Get out of red state, damn it. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, this fucking flurry thingy. Oh, it sucks. Nah, how'd that even hit me? No, 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 no. It fucking got me again already. God damn it. I don't know why I'm healing this much. No. No. I wanted to believe in the meme. I wanted to believe in the meme. Uh, I got halfway through phase two in one go. And most of it with no health, like no healing. <laughs> phase two does not look very hard. Uh, and also it's kind of a reminder potentially that I just need to play this game more like Dark Souls and I don't know. I had such a problem of struggling to play games that weren't Dark Souls, not like Dark Souls, like trying to not play Elden Ring and Bloodborne and Sekiro like Dark Souls, and I, so I always try to like fix that going forward. Fuck, I can't even transfer my weapon. Because that's what people always complain about, is like, you're just you're playing it like Dark Souls and this isn't Dark Souls. And I'm like, I know, but Dark, but it's also, it's like Dark Souls, and these habits are how I got through Dark Souls. and. I wouldn't have gotten through Dark Souls if I hadn't, like, internalized these habits to... on a deeper level. Oh, it's such a long run, it's not worth it. I just have to have to transform my weapon during the fight. Or use one of these items, I guess, that I never use. That would be the smart thing to do. There we go. It's like I'm trying to play the game like it's not Dark Souls and try to do that and so it's a, try to figure out the parries but I think this was this is a lesson we learned with the puppet Matt King guy was just the fact that like pivoting back to just being a dodging guy and using my amazing dodging skills of playing a fucking Dark Souls game did pay off pretty well and I kind of and I need to I, I guess it's partly just observing trying to figure out when those habits work because when I am nailing my parries and charging up my fable meter and putting them into a stagger state like there's a perf there's a beautiful moment where i put them into stagger state do my fatal attack then do a full fable combo and at that point like so much damage has happened that it's like oh my god i'm doing amazing and i'm doing it via the mechanics the game introduced but like that last round at least in phase two did show that like just dodging can do me so well the problem is the red attacks he keeps doing that that big red attack and I can never time it correctly, and I guess, I guess I just have to run away from it. I could see if I can just get away with not parrying, but I've built my character around parrying. Ugh. And similarly, like, but also like, yeah, having more openings to hit him might get, put him into the into the staggered state more e easily. It's hard to say. I don't know. Everything is rough. Bum 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 bum. At the very least, I think that my whole stunning them with this with the parry thing does happen at the beginning. Because he definitely seems to stop dead in his tracks. 
Fuck. Good example. <laughs> oh god, these are really wide flails, though. I didn't connect? God, I'm destroying his entire ass with my giant Dark Souls brain. I heal I think I healed once. Oh my god. Look what happens when I just play the game differently. <laughs> Wait, is this fight easy actually? Out. Fuck. He didn't even do that before, did he? Ah! Oh god. No! Ow, I thought I blocked. Ah! Okay, well fuck me, I guess. Jesus Christ. I made the first phase look so easy. <laughs> and then phase two was like, hey, here's a bunch of things I didn't even do last time. That was a wild... That was just a completely different fight than last time. It sucks, man. Uh... He, last time he was pretty much just doing one combo over and over again, and then jumping around sometimes for too long. It could be a case of the Ancient Dragon from Dark Souls 2, where like, your current standing position has a huge effect on the AI, and completely makes him do different behaviors. Which leads to really weird moments where you're like, why is he behaving so differently? I've done this fight before! Because you don't know what your effect is on the fight. It is surprisingly hard to actually apply my electric effect on an enemy. I wonder if just effects kind of suck for slow weapons. Aha! Nope, that doesn't work. I thought it, I thought haha, his turning radius will be too bad. Nope. I can't believe it applies in one hit. It's just rude. I've got blue meter for this fight, I guess. That sucked. No, I'm stuck. Oh, I didn't quite get the meter. Ah, fuck. 
screwed. Fuck. Just dodge through it. <laughs> What's he doing? Yo, <laughs> go blue mode, go. Uh, eliminated. I think he might be a dickhead. <laughs> oh, we got it. Okay. Damn. That was a bit tough, but by the end, honestly, pretty easy. Uh, it's just, I don't know why I took as long as I did to get there. I guess I'm just, I'm in parry brain, which is funny because I'm not, I don't think about parries until I'm fighting some kind of boss or mini boss. Every normal enemy, I just play like Dark Souls. I just outrange them, charge up a big hit to hit them. Stay, and then just control their range. They can't hit me most of the time. Uh, but boss fights is like, okay, time to use all the boss mechanics. And then I'm like, fucking, like, just dead out of, out of, I'm just wrong. But in particular, it's just like, I think about like my, some of my favorite boss fights in Sekido, especially uh, 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 the ones that people, uh, uh, there's the, there's the ape, obviously, but then like the, one that a lot of people had a ton of trouble with that I think I had an easier time with was the demon thing, the demon of hatred, I think it's called. And because that was like an especially Dark Soulsy thing, so it was more, I was more heavily relying on dodging and using uh, ninja items over parrying. And yeah, if you, approach, if you approach that fight purely around dodging, it's just so much easier that I should have beaten it in only a few attempts. The fact that I was like, the fact that this was one of those fights where I'm like, oh no, this fight's hard, and then, oh no, there's a phase two, no, it was like, extremely funny by the end because of how easy I was making it by the end. <laughs> like, I actually, like, I'm fine, everything's fine, whatever. NBD. I knew you'd do it. I had a feeling you'd be the perfect bait. I got what I wanted thanks to you. The last hero weapon is finally in my hands. I knew where it was, but I didn't dare lay my hands on it. The swamp is too dangerous. Someday soon, you'll see. You have my thanks. And you've earned a nickname. Alidoro's Best Beat. See you at the hotel. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Alidoro's best bait. Let's go back to the hotel and celebrate the spoils of the hunt. Ba -da -ba -do. There's three heads there now. Oof. I don't know how anyone sees this guy as a hero if he's going to talk to people like this, though. Just an awful person. 
You can t it, it, it points to the idea that he's impersonating the actual hero and just getting away with stuff as a result. Puppet devouring green hunters ergo. Ergo obtained from the green monster in the swamp. It is packed with immense power. No one knows where the green monster of the swamp came from. Something he was produced from Kroth's wrath. And there's a reborn champion, Richard Born Champion Victor. Victor had once been praised for standing at the pinnacle of all living beings. When he recovered his dwindling strength, he swore absolute fealty to the alchemists. Whatever choice you make. Every choice you make, every breath you take. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can only get to 84, so we're not going to make it to the next level. Man, I could take chunks out of that health. I almost feel like I should apologize for wasting everyone's time the way that I just approached the fight so incorrectly that I was making it hard mode. And then I just started dodging through his extremely easy to dodge attacks, and I'm like, oh. Right. <laughs> dodging. This is, what, this is probably why I'm bad at fighting games. I mean, it's hard to tell because I don't practice fighting games, so like, how would I know ever? But I could totally see it being related to the fact that like, I just... It's hard for me to process so many different defensive options and know which one to do on the fly. So it's hard. It's best for me to just be like, this is what the, the one thing I do in this game is. I beat Dark Souls. Uh, I, when I played Demon Souls, I got to like the Armor Knight and couldn't beat it. The Tower Knight at the beginning of the game, which is a pretty common experience. My, mir my experience mirrored Yahtzee's review of the game, where I just could not... It just felt so punishing and defeating to even try to do the Tower Knight and the gauntlet before it. That I was just like, fuck it, man. And I just kind of played other games. Then Dark Souls came out and I eventually beat it with a shield and spear. All the way through, stubbornly played the whole thing with a shield and spear, which is... Rough. That's a rough way to play that game. Dark Souls 2. I don't know if I, it was later Dark Souls or it was just Dark Souls 2, but eventually I did play the game by dodging all the time, and it's like, wait a minute, this makes sense. I think it was Dark Souls 2 that, or maybe even Bloodborne. Yeah, I think I might have played Dark Souls 2 with 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 uh, with spear and shield again, and a cleric throwing lightning spells. I think that was my first run. Right, because I remember I remember somebody stole my footage to make a a video but that was a quote-unquote cleric guy, but it was just reciting the information on the start screen because they didn't have the game yet, so they were literally incapable of providing useful information, and they just stole my footage to recite the information on it to, for footage. That was frustrating. That was a creator with like 100,000 subscribers when I had less than 1,000 subscribers, and they were just stealing my footage to compete directly with me on the same search results that were the only way people would find me. Like, you could see in your search results very clearly that like, oh, the primary way people are finding my my channel is my Dark Souls 2 content, and the primary way they're finding my Dark Souls 2 content is type, by typing Dark Souls 2 Cleric and finding my series. Like, that was my only tiny chance of growth. And this other channel was eating up all the search results for Dark Souls 2 Cleric before me, and were higher ranked because they were a bigger channel, and they were doing it with my video. They had just stolen my video. Like, it's fucked. It's people, dark, YouTubers have always been shitty to each other. It's just, it's fucked up. Like, if you want to use my footage, just as a blanket, like, permission thing, if you're doing, like, a, like, fucking a video essay or a review or whatever, and you, like, need footage from my channel for some reason, go ahead, I guess. Like, that's not, that doesn't matter. You're not directly competing with me on my own, like, turf or whatever. But if you, may, if you use my footage to compete with, like, the exact search results that somebody would use to look up my f my playthroughs and give me a chance to do anything, that's just actively hurting me. Like, why would I want you to do that? That's just a shitty thing to do. People ask all the time if they can use my footage for other stuff, and I, like, I have, I, I, most of the time I don't get around to responding because I'm just like, I just too many fucking emails all the time. I can't handle this. I gotta do work at some point uh, and do my own stuff. Uh, so I don't usually get around to it, but if you're hearing this now, I don't care if you use my footage in the thing. It's kind of unprofessional in that, like, you'd probably want to have your own proper footage that's, like, well-recorded and high quality and, uh, has the game audio without my voice in it and so on. So using somebody's Let's Play footage just kind of seems, like, not very professional for making your th stuff. Like, I get that people starting out probably don't have the resources, but they should probably just figure out how to get the footage themselves, but whatever. But that's the specific way that it becomes bad. 
But yeah, I uh, I think it was only when I think it was Bloodborne that finally cracked me and had me playing Dark Souls by dodging around constantly and so on. Maybe. Or maybe late game Dark Souls 2, but definitely I remember the like, I remember being a cleric in Dark Souls 2 at first. And then specifically it was that like Dark Souls 2 and Scholar of the First, uh, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, and Bloodborne came, in, came out only a week apart from each other, which was weird. Just really weird for a uh, studio to put out two games almost at the same time. Even if one of them's a weird re release of their other game or something, like why compete with yourself? But being a, a YouTuber that was primarily covering Souls games at the time, and and kind of still am, just somewhat dilutedly, I maybe should focus on them more so that people actually watch my stuff because the stats are going down. Uh, the I had to just I had to reconcile the fact that I was playing these two games that have technically different play styles at the same time. So. I know there's an H-Bomber guy video that explains, like, the genius of Bloodborne and how it rem it makes you reconsider how pl to play old Souls games because you play them like Bloodborne and you're like, damn, this is this is more fun. But really what happened is that, uh... It was just that Bloodborne could was incompatible with the playstyle of Dark Souls that I had. And I was covering both games at once, so it's like... I can't keep switching back and forth, these games feel too similar. I have to learn how to play Bloodborne. And then that just let that redirect how I play Dark Souls because otherwise I'm gonna break trying to go back and forth between two different playstyles because I couldn't. I was too busy to just sit there and binge one of those games and have be be completely done in a week and then pick the other one up when it came out. I had to like do a few episodes a week while working my day job at the time because I was working in a cubicle full time uh, and doing YouTube as a bonus thing full time and uh, slowly losing my mind because don't do that. But also, that's the only way to start it on YouTube most of the time. Uh, and yeah, if you uh, if you play those at the same time, that's the, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna play Dark Souls like it's Bloodborne. So I, it, it's not necessarily that Dark Souls taught that Bloodborne taught me to play other games like that in the way that people normally describe. It was just that I literally was playing them at the same time, and the only realistic way to process that was to find the one playstyle that worked in both games, which is a little different from what people normally claim about how these systems work. It's just very goofy. That's my backstory. Is being a YouTuber changed my way of playing Dark Souls because Bloodborne hurt me. I found the last treasure thanks to you. The Saber. A precious artifact from overseas. It'll always remind me of the rascal who stole it and then fell into the nest. I, I tried to save him, but uh, I failed. Let the punishment fit the crime, I say. <laughs> and in a twist of fate, you must become the weapon's true owner. A great weapon calls for a great warrior. Show me that you're worthy to wield it. Guy's yeah, such a piece of shit. He's he's so clearly not heroic. He's like, ha ha ha. Well, this other guy died, so fuck him. Am I right? Ha. <laughs> and it's also becoming increasingly clear that like it, it seems like he literally is just showing up at the boss fights I do and stealing the weapon that was already there that he didn't make or find, really. He's just stealing it from the battlefield that I earned and then making me spend the thing to get it from him. Hmm. What's this? A poster singing my praises? Oh, dear. Your practical jokes go too far. A, a wanted poster? <laughs> right, yeah. Let me, let me explain. There is an unscrupulous reporter called Medoro. And he's the epitome of yellow journalism, and he only writes favorable articles if you bribe him. One time, I didn't give him a certain antique he wanted, and he slandered me, just like this. What has this world come to? Even noble explorers searching for true history get lambasted for all to see. <sighs> Perhaps I should be pleased that this scrap of paper is powerless, as there's no authority to pay the reward. You can keep it as a souvenir. A great weapon calls for a great... He's full of lies. Okay, so the newest one is... Fury attack dodge available. What does that mean? The ghost walk amulet. So this costs puppet devouring green hunter. Or I get the two dragon sword, a technique weapon. So it's useless to me unless I want to be a technique character. Which I could respect to technically, but... Then we have to upgrade a whole new weapon. It is often closer to my play style. I don't know. I like being a dex guy in these games. Ba -doop -ba -doop. 
But there's a uh, hitting heavy is nice. It is really cool when you do like as, as frustrating as it can be to use a heavy slow weapon. It is really frustrating. Uh, it is really satisfying when you hit a guy and they stop. You're like, oh, like the struggle is that sometimes you hit somebody with the, their most heavy attack of all and they just power through it. And you're like, man, what was the point? An amulet that can be equipped on a puppet. The information and memories that are useful for movement can be imprinted on the symbol to draw special powers. The sentries feared the ghostly movements of the green monster of the swamp. One of the sentries miraculously managed to put the monster's information in an amulet, but he also disappeared. The monster's information in an amulet. So the description's useless at explaining what it actually does. So we just know it does the fury attack dodge. You know, the fury attack dodge. So this is 100% one of those like wiki slash YouTube type mechanics where you just, just, well, only way to find that is to look up online what the mechanic is because the game's not gonna help me out here. That stuff can be frustrating, but whatever. Same thing with this, all legions abilities tier plus one. But that should be tied to the fact that you should be able to upgrade Legion Arms. I should review how that works a bit. Modify Legion Arm. Oh, I mean, it makes this go up a tier. Continuous small sparks from the hands inflict damage while charging. Might as well. One more and it increases the maximum level, but that means charging for so long that, like, is that ever gonna happen? Hmm. I just don't know what to do with this mechanic. Kudos if you've managed to fit into your moves, your playstyle. Yeah, so now it's slowly doing charge over time. But it's not that much overall. Not a huge change. Just a little bit of bonus. It means you apply a little bit while you're charging it, if you, which is a, almost like a consolation prize if you fail. Maybe. My ongoing struggle is just the fact that, like, I can play around with these items a bit more because I use them at a different context than when I'm currently attacking. It's recovery, it's distance. But if I'm going to attack, you really need to justify to me why I'm going to use use some other weird gadget instead of just my normal attack when it's time to attempt when it's time to attack. Because like, one of my, my number one goal is pretty much always to attack. And so it's like, okay, here we go. I found my opening. I finally get to attack. And then it's like, no, I use this other thing. I'm like, is it worth it? Does that little, does that spark do enough to make up for the fact that I'm not currently getting to attack? She looks not dead yet. That IV might be the cure though. How's she doing? Oh, she's not petrified anymore. But will she survive? Come here, child. This is my first chance to get a proper look at you. It's a shame my illness kept me from seeing such a handsome gentleman. Oh, to be young again. You are responsible for this miracle. You have no idea how much it means to me. I have to stay seated as I feel a little lightheaded, but I feel the vigor I thought I'd lost forever. Thank you. If Krat ever holds a proper ball again, I hope you'll ask me for a dance. Shit, what did I actually get? <laughs> Some radiant ergo. And a pose. Greet. Beep. 
people have no idea so many secrets are buried in Krat. Thanks for keeping me company. What are you curious about? She's survived. She's a surviving for now. I fully expect her to die. I feel like this is the gut punch where you give, you make her recover and be happy, and you celebrate, and the next time you come by, she's dead. And then you question whether that was worth it, because like she felt good again, but then it ended. remember much beyond Rosa Isabel Street, do you? Ask me about areas you want to know about. I don't have any quartz, do I? No. You'd almost think boss fights would give you those. Oh, that'd be nice. Nice bit of pacing. Did I misinterpret the, f the head, or was that just all there was to it? Oh, that's this guy, isn't it? Whoops. No! Can it be? It can! Are you hurt anywhere? Ha! You never fail to surprise me, Companio. Now, allow me to return the surprise. This little wonder creates a lead-acid battery in a flash. The Golden Ergo is the purest form of power we can use, and it's nearly perfect. We could power a city block with this. You see, the alchemists ordered transportation from me, powered by this. I'm not sure, but maybe it's still in their underground base. Just one problem with the base. I don't know exactly where it is. I don't know in exactly either. I had to just hand it over immediately after the launching ceremony. After all, I am the prince of the Krat social scene and I surrendered to their mysticism. There. It's done. Now take it. Hmm. A secret alchemist's underground lair. That sounds like something Antonia might well have heard of. You'd better ask her about it. Golden lead battery. I know my way around a weapon. It's usually. It feels weird having this be almost done already. I guess it is a different currency system though entirely. Whatever choice you make. And Sophia. Let's just review what the item was real quick. Let's see. Lead acid battery made of golden ergo by Vanini. This is the material that Vanini said he needed to find a way to get to the Isle of Alchemist. Special ergo powered enabled Vanini to move the giant submarine. It's manufactured to produce a higher power output through the electrical simulation of ergo. I think it's just plot. I don't have to worry about so much. Because it's just where we're going next. Let's check in on this guy. All right, buddy. Life is short, and life in Krat is shorter. I reckon I should cherish what time I've got. All I can do is keep plugging away. About Mandoro. Uh, you actually met Alidoro. 
and asked him about the Wanted poster. That's odd. Alidoro and Medoro are friends. When I was hurt, he took me to Medoro, who was one of the first on the scene. Oh, Medoro is quite the medic. He saved me when the workshop tower fell. There's gotta be a logical explanation. The Alidoro I admire would never talk about a friend like that. But... Well, who knows, maybe that wanted poster is real. You keep an eye on him, if you see him again. I'm starting to think this guy might not be the right guy.